my dear friends. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our passage this morning is taken from the extended meditation on the Eucharist in John chapter 6. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I want to talk about the verse that doesn't mention bread this morning, although I do think it touches very much on the meaning of what bread of life has for us. Verse 38 says, I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. It reminds me of Jesus' moment in Gethsemane when he says, not my will, but thine be done, which is of course echoed in our Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What does this mean? There is a paradox here which runs right to the heart of our Christian faith. We live in a culture that makes choice into an idol. It is what we choose that defines who we are, and that might be our breakfast cereal, or our car, or our house, or our career. Our culture raises up choice as the essence of our identity. This is profoundly unchristian. For the Christian, our identity is received as a gift. We are who we are in the sight of God. We are who we are because first we are loved into being and then we respond in love. Our source of identity is found outside of ourselves, of our choices. And frankly, thank God for that. Our shoulders are not big enough to carry the burden of creation. But this is often thought of as a crushing denial of identity, as if there's no alternative to a binary division between total sovereignty on the one hand and total slavery on the other. The paradox is that on the cross, Jesus was both fully himself and fully denying himself. What on earth is going on? What can we take from this? Where is the bread that gives us life? I want to give you an analogy to start to understand this. And I want to use a term from grammar, which is the middle voice. The active voice says this, I am doing something. For example, I give medicine to my patient. The passive voice is, Medicine is being given to me. Can you see how there's a parallel between the total sovereignty and total slavery? The active voice is total sovereignty. The passive voice is total slavery. But that contrast bedevils our conversation around will. The middle voice says, I take the medicine. The subject the I is both active and passive, choosing and receiving. In other words, there's a cooperation going on, which is how we need to understand our connection to God. God is not a great tyrant, obliterating our truest selves with his demands, nor are we little tyrants, creating our identities on our little hills of resistance. This whole framework of conflict is the wrong way to understand our wills and God's wills. Saint Augustine said, Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee, O Lord. There is no conflict here. Let me give you a different framework to take away. I'm not going to go into great detail on this for now, but it is an image that's very important to me. It helped me to come to faith, and I think it gives us a better sense of how we connect to God. And the image is this. God is dancing with us, and we are the Ginger Rogers to God's Fred Astaire. God takes the lead, and we respond, and together we dance, and then we're in heaven. Heaven, I'm in heaven, 
And my heart beats so that I can hardly speak And I seem to find the happiness I see When we're out together dancing cheek to cheek Until we meet again. Amen.